Mindless Can, the podcast, with radio personality Jane Lindley Thomas and psychologist Paul Bushel. Because every act of kindness, no matter how big or small, can change lives. In this series, Jane and Paul hope to enrich your life by giving you practical tools on how to be kinder in your relationships with yourself, with those around you, at home, work, and in your community. Welcome to another episode of the Kindness Can podcast with myself, psychologist Paul Bushell, and the ever lovely Jane Lily Thomas. How are you today, Jane? Uh, hello, my darling. Always wonderful to connect. Yeah, my best time of the week, the Kindness Can right. podcast. Indeed. And today we welcome uh, Luke Dillon, who has become a friend over the years. But Luke is, among other things, a divorce coach. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation today. How's it, Luke? Hey, Janie. Yeah, all good. Thanks. Great to be online with both of you. So thanks very much for the invitation. And uh, yeah, looking forward to chatting. Obviously, a conversation around divorce is never going to be easy. But let's start with your story and how you got into this kind of line of work. Yeah, I suppose uh, by experience, really, unfortunately, and fortunately, um, over time, you come, uh, you know, you takes you on this path where you end up, you know, in a position where you get divorced. And uh, that was me 10 years ago. And with two young children, I really, it was really a case of looking at it and saying, okay, so how do I now manage this process and make sure that um, I don't become estranged from my kids? Yeah, and, and move through it with a sort of a long-term goal, really, on, on what I wanted my life to look like, you know, once my kids were older was uh, the key driver, really. And then having been through that, I found myself being approached by friends and, yeah, before I know it, I was doing some courses and some studying and I was um, going into the coaching route already and uh, it just seemed like a a natural space to step into. So more by default than by design. Mm. I know that the first place that you started was actually seeking help from professionals and not just one or two, but a collective of people that could try and help you, you know, kind of almost by the sounds of it, put pieces together where you took little bits of everybody's recommendations and formulated your own pathway. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when I got to the stage where I realized that that's probably where I was going to end up or where my marriage was going to end up, I decided then to go and chat to a um, few psychologists, primarily on the child who specialized in child psychology and some counselors and, and ask them, you know, my question to them was, what hurts children the most in a di- coming out of divorced homes? You know, is it um, the fact that the parents have got divorced? You know, and the the general answer to that was it's how the parents end up treating each other post-divorce that hurts children. Because when there's a handover, there's stress or there's anger or there's an argument. And, and it was to try and mitigate that, you know, so... Before I pulled the trigger and said, okay, well, I'm going to do this, I knew what the risks were and, and where I needed to protect my children as much as possible. And also, um, yeah, I sort of had, a, I suppose, a plan in mind as what I wanted my life and their life post-divorce to look like. So that was really helpful. And I think, uh, yeah, a few things came out of that, you know, that were, were incredible. The one was, you know, you've got to be flexible as a dad because, largely if um, your ex decides or meet someone else in another town or city, you need to be prepared to move if you want to stay close to your children. You know, because I never, ever wanted sole custody and for either of us. I wanted us to share custody and for our children to have half their time with their dad and half their time with their mom. So we had to be close together, which probably meant that I needed to be able to move and to be flexible. So I made that decision there and then that I would remain flexible, that if their mom decided to move to Durban, Cape Town, Bloemfontein, Pofada, I'd pack a suitcase and go and find something to do in one of those places. So it was a very useful mindset, you know, to have before making that decision. And then, because I think so often what happens is, is couples or their relationship ends and, you know, they decide to end the marriage and get divorced. And then it's, okay, so now how does it work? So I found that, you know, that was really beneficial to me doing it that way around and saying, okay, well, these are the risks I'm going to experience and these are going to be my challenges. Like how do I prepare myself for them now and have the right mindset if that that helps as an answer? (laughs) Yeah, I think as you're talking, something that I want to pull out there is that 
in so many divorces, there obviously are so many different feelings, right? And, and different experiences yeah. of that change. So they're your individual feelings, they're your couple yeah. feelings, yeah. they're our family yeah. feelings, and then they're, of course, yeah. our individual children's feelings. And they, they might not all be on the same page at the same time. They might be different feelings at different times through that experience. So I imagine, uh, and I'd like to hear your views on it or your experience of it, how that kind of plays itself out and how that sometimes can get kind of mixed up, I suppose, all balled into one. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's res- just uh, trying to respect that. I th- for me, Paul, what I looked at was I said, well, you know, a marriage is, you know, it's a, it's a formalized relationship. But at the end of the day, it's a relationship. And it's to keep that in context that it's a relationship ending. And that happens all through our lives, be they friendships, you know, family relationships. And not to overanalyze that and, and beat yourself up around that, which I think is, is so often a lot of the guilt and um, that comes with getting divorced. And then to recognize that depending on where you are, in the process and whether you're the person asking for the divorce or being asked, being told that, you know, your partner wants to leave you, you'll be in different places on that change cycle, you know? So that was the research that I looked at. And and I think a lot of, and I speak, I only work with, uh, with dads or mostly dads and some, some divorced men, but I only work with, with men or the people that I've helped is that there's a perception that if you're the one asking for the divorce, it's far less painful or less challenging. And I think that's wrong. I think you're just in a different place on the change cycle because you've been through your trauma prior to asking and building up, you know, that courage to ask. And it's then understanding or what I like to do is try and get them to understand where your partner is or your ex is on that change, on that change curve and what they're going through. Because if you can understand that, you can understand when they're angry or when they're really batting. And I think that makes it a little bit easier. Well, from, from what I've seen, it's, it's helped people understand that. You know, and I've always said that um, you won't regret being kind, you know. And sometimes being kind is just not reacting. And it's maybe just being quiet and letting, understanding where that person is and they, they've passed the denial phase and they're now angry or, and just being patient enough. And, and that's a kindness in itself sometimes instead of, you know, always being combative or mm, reactive. But, so I think uh, that's always been sort of the way I've looked at it. And, and I like to think the way I manage mine, you know, was sometimes just to, just to be quiet. And that was my kindness, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a big part of kindness is, of course, the ability to, to empathize, to pause yeah. and try to understand where the other people in this journey are uh, yeah. and kind of reflecting on that. Because, you know, like I said, yeah. yeah, everyone might be in different parts of that change Great. cycle. And when yeah. you start to connect and understand with where they might be, that might change your, your reaction. It might make it easier yeah. to be more understanding or, or kind. Yeah. Definitely. What really strikes me, Luke, is that the way in which you've approached this, it hasn't been, as we were talking about, reactive. It hasn't been get divorced and then realize how we're going to deal with it. It was like, this is coming. I can feel this change happening. Let me do the research before I, before I pull the trigger, so to speak. But I suppose every situation is different. I mean, if you're dealing with a dad who, for example, has dealt with infidelity, obviously there's going to be a different tone and feeling to the navigation of a relationship as opposed to something like ill behavior or jealousy. So I suppose that there are different cogs to the process depending on each individual story. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, I suppose, you know, like relationships end for various reasons and each person will have their own reason or, you know, and either be on the receiving end you know, of that request for a divorce or be the one who's asking for the divorce. So it's quite different then in the approach because sometimes you're feeling rejected and sometimes you're doing the rejecting, I suppose. So then it is different, Jane, for sure, you know. It's helping that person recover and move through that, that change process themselves. And if they're the one who's been left or been asked to honor the divorce or to give a divorce or to terminate the relationship, 
And yeah, I find those men often their anger lasts a bit longer, and it's helping them them look at that watershed moment and say, okay, well, so irrespective of how much anger you carry or or how you feel about what's happened, like where do you want to go to? You now have the opportunity to create this whole new life. What's that going to look like? So, and I, I only deal, work with a few a few men who are on that side. Most of my clients are dads. So it's then saying, okay, well, how do you manage the long term outcome of of the result of this divorce now? So for me, I wanted to be in a position where, when my daughter gets married one day, to be able to be in the chapel to have a dance, to be in the same room as her mom and for there to be no anxiety for her because it's, she didn't choose, you know, it wasn't her choice. <laughs> so it was, for me, it was how do I manage that, that, that for Jenna and James, there's no stress going forward for them at a 16th or a 21st or a wedding or, you know, a graduation, both of their parents can be in a room and uh, have a cup of coffee, a glass of wine you know, share a laugh and there's no anxiety. It was how, how do I create that and what do I need to do? Because so I'm not chasing a, a six-month or a one-year goal. This is a 10, 15-year goal. So what little steps do I need to take? And where am I going to need to put my pride, my ego, my feelings aside to some extent and say, okay, well, that's the goal I'm chasing. So that might be a sacrifice that I make today in order to achieve that at the end. And that's what I try and get the dads I work with to understand is, you know, an irritation today doesn't need to mean, you know, that you can't talk. And when your daughter or son turns 16, you can't now both be at the party, which is really what they want as children, isn't it? So talk us through some of the practical steps you know, those small steps that you're talking about. So I've got an idea of what my long-term goal is. I know where I'm going, yeah. but now I've got to take the steps to get there. Talk us through some of the practical tips or tools that you often share with parents going through the motions of this and the emotions of it. I think that's some tough conversations, Paul, in the beginning. You're both hurt for, for different reasons or you know similar reasons, but you've got to move past that and sit down and say, okay, well, we're both parents, and if nothing else good came out of this relationship, the one thing that did come out of it is children that we both adore. So how do we continue to parent consciously and show our children that we adore them and help this not be a long-term effect in their relationship and teach them what a relationship looks like and how respectful people can treat one another? So in the beginning, it was sitting down and saying, okay, so... So what does that framework look like and how do we make that happen? So I suppose the very first thing that we did was um, to set up a calendar and make sure that, that it was very defined and eradicate all that frustration of, oh, but, you know, kids are supposed to be you, with you that weekend or this weekend. You know, so we'd do a 12-month calendar and we had the kids 50-50, so it was simple. One weekend with you, one weekend with me. Mondays and Tuesdays, you, Wednesday, Thursday, me, and the alternating Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So one week there'll be four nights with me and the other week there'll be four nights with their mom. And it just, it just rolled like that, unless we sat down and changed it. So it was, that structure was very clear in the beginning and it removed arguments or any frustration. So change over time was at midday. That was very helpful and it gives both parents space to, to start healing and or moving on with your life. So I think where you put structure in, you remove the space where there are disagreements. So we had, we had good agreements around diet, TV time, bedtime, you know, and, and really looking at the best thing for what, well, what we believed was the best thing, you know, um, which is I think what you always do as a parent. And, you know, I've no doubt that when Jenna and James get, to older in the years, they will criticize my parenting skills, but um, I've done the same to my folks. So, yeah. you know, you're doing the best you can. And it was looking at a framework and saying, okay, well, this is what's best for them. They need routine. You know, they've got a big change in their life now. So their homes have changed. Now they've got two homes, but we don't necessarily need to move. 
and we can give them their school as as a constant in their life where they're with their friends. So we agreed that 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 school for the the same school they were at for the next two years. They were young, you know. Bedtime was eight o'clock. It wasn't more than half an hour of TV during the week, whatever it was. You know, they had a had a stable diet. So it was. If you can reach agreement in those areas, it makes it a lot easier and it avoids, you know, arguments. And then it was a case of saying, okay, so, so what are the arguments that are worth having mm. that are important and what are the ones that aren't important? That was my question. I mean, this is all so beautiful and I just love the way and your kids are so blessed to have you and their mum. So what happens when you have a party that is caught up in the guilt and caught up in the resentment and caught up in the slinging and the name calling and the shaming and the pulling in different directions. I mean, I see so much more of that, unfortunately, in the world, as opposed to this nurturing space of this isn't our kid's journey. Yes, they're collateral, but we've got to set the foundation here so that we can pave the way together as a family. What do you do if one party is in it and willing to do the work and the other isn't? That is uh, regularly the case. Listen, I can only help someone who's willing to to work in that space with me, Jane. Mm. You know, like if, uh, you know, so most people, if they come to you, as they would come to Paul or for you for advice, they're in a space where they want things to be better. So no, if they're maybe. working I'm with... talking about the person that's not in the yep. session with you, the one that's at home with the grind, the axe to Being be combative. Grind. Yeah, exactly. no, no. Exactly. Um, yeah, listen. It's then minimizing your reaction to that. Uh-huh. So it's staying off social media. It's, um, you know, those were all the things that, uh, that I did. I just got off all forms of social media so that there isn't that space for criticism or, or viewing or stalking or, you know. So it's, I think it's staying out of those platforms and it's being respectful that some of your friends will take sides and just – just managing those relationships really mm. and trying to continuously not react and stick to, to what was agreed or an agreement and talk to the agreement rather than you did this or, mm. you know, so if it, if, if it was anything pre-divorce or that led up to the divorce, I would always say, I mean, I didn't have to endure that fortunately, but when my, my clients do or people I'm working with, I say, well, You've got to just try and refocus that conversation and say, okay, I understand, I recognize you're angry about that, and that's a discussion we can have later. But right now, we need to do what's best for our children. Little Matthew's battling at school. What are we doing for him? So it was always a case of just helping them redirect that. And, and I think if you position it carefully, I've seen that often, eventually, if you give it time, you win with that. So, you know, like, so I've got a client now. So he just, he's stuck to that, to that mantra to say, I understand that. But right now we need to focus on the children. How do we, I know you adore them as much as I do. How do we do what's best for them right now? I don't need you to like me. And I understand you're angry and that's all cool. But we agree that that isn't little Matthew's problem. You know, that's between you and me. And, and I'll take whatever you send my way. But right now, we've got a child in need. And if at handover, you know, you get out the car and attack me and call me names, I mean, I can take that. I mean, I don't like it, but I can accept it. But you've got a child who's then crying and an hour or two hours before we meet so that he can change homes, he's starting to show stress signals. Now, if we both love him like we say we do, surely we can work together to show him that and put our personal feelings aside. And tomorrow when he's at school, you're welcome to come around here or come and stand at the gates and shout over the fence at me if you need to vent. Just not then. You know, so... And sometimes it does take time, Jane, you know. And, and they're going to be... I mean, I'm 11 years in, you know, and I'm very blessed that... Uh, their mom can, can, we can sit down like we did a week ago, have a cup of coffee, talk about our children who are in, both in boarding school, how they're doing, what's happening, what's working, slight signs of stress here, what's the next step, do we ride it out till half term or do we um, look at a different 
in a system or do we visit once a week or do we not? So, but we can have that discussion and agree on what's the best path forward. So it's not just my good work. It's also been, been hers. And, um, you know, that she was willing to, to make the effort, which has been quite amazing. And, and I've absolutely no doubt that there are times that I irritate her beyond any form of comparison. And, and there will be other little things like I'm an early sleeper <laughs> and I believe that you need a lot of sleep to, you know, to give your brain the rest that need, it needs and to deal with emotion and stuff. And teenagers need that. So, you know, those were little arguments that sometimes were, you know, that I, had, I felt I had to have. And maybe now looking back, there were some of them that, that I could have let go. But that was always my, my view and, and what I've said to dads I work with is, in six months' time, will it have been worth having that argument or that battle? Yeah, I'm and hearing a lot of that kind of separating of different experiences and different feelings out. So our feelings might have changed for each other, and we might have a lot of hot, big feelings between each other right now. We, we're angry, we're disappointed, all those things. But those are our things to work out on our own or in our own separate counseling. And then the, the feelings we have towards and with the kids, and they're completely different. They're still the same in many ways. We both still love these kids. We both still want the same for them. So although some things have changed radically, yeah. some things have stayed absolutely the same, and our behavior needs to, to reflect that, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. So I've always said, or for me, was to look at what was my long-term outcome goal? And how, how do we get there? So I sat with my ex and I said, okay, so this is what would be great as I see it, you know, and it might not be the same for you. So how would it look for you? But if you agree that for us both to be at our daughter's wedding, at our son's wedding, at 21st, and to be able to have a glass of wine, to have arms around each other and stand in a family photo as a bigger extended blended family, and all happily there, like, how would that look? And, you know, she said, no, that would be amazing. So I said, okay, well, then how do we make that happen? And when do we, when are there gimmies, like, to say, okay, listen, like, I, I, I don't agree with that, but, okay. And we have heated arguments. And she'll say, well, I don't agree with that opinion, and I'll say, yeah, and, you know, we'll have a difference of opinions. And she'll say, okay, well, this is my home, and this is what I'd like to do in my home, and this is what I'm going to do. So then it's an assessment to say, okay, well, are Jen and James at risk? Is it really that bad? Am I overreacting? You know, nine times out of 10 years. Um, and, uh, you know, is this something that I need to create tension around that's going to trickle down to my children or do I just let it go now? So most times I'd be in a position where I could let it go and vice versa, you know, I'm no saints. Um, you know, there's been times where, She's had to make peace with the decision. But generally, we've always tried to look at it from that view. And that's the view I try and encourage my dads to have is, you know, like at some stage you're going to arrive there and your ex is going to have a new partner. You have to manage that. And you might have to accept that your children learn to love him. And if children, if they love him because of how he treats them and that he's kind to them and he takes them to school and he's there for sports and, like it's not for you to interrupt or to to try and break that up, and it's it must be it is difficult as a parent to see that, but you'll always be their biological mom or dad, and I've always said, well, if if someone else comes into my children's lives, loves them, respects them, treats them well, contributes to their greater well being and their experience as little people, then surely I can at least be mature enough to be grateful for that. Because so many children grow up in an environment where a new partner comes in and he couldn't give a damn about them. And I think that's then a challenge where you have to step in as a parent and, and you know, say, okay, well, we need a framework here to work with of what's acceptable, you know, and what isn't. But that was always my give is to say, listen, if, if, let them be the judge and I'll respect their decision. When they come to me and say, dad, listen, there's a problem then I'll have the discussion. Till then, I'll have to put my ego and being the only dad around or whatever aside. But understanding that those are challenges you're going to have 
if you decide, okay, well, this relationship's not working for me anymore and I want to exit it, but I've got children, well, then it's like that's a conscious decision and there are consequences to it. And how are you going to manage those going forward? So, yeah, those were the important things for me, Paul. You know, like I live in a small village. It's, it, was, it was incredibly tough. And at the same time, I went through my biggest financial difficulty in my life. So, you know, there were jobs in Durban, Joburg, but that would mean leaving Jenna or James. So my decision was to look at it and say, okay, well, I, I can't do that. My commitment is first to them and then to myself and to make it work. And, I, and I'm glad every day I did that. And that's what I try and share with anyone I help is to say, you won't look back in 10 years' time and say, oh, I shouldn't have been so kind, you know, or I shouldn't have been so patient. <laughs> you know, you won't, those aren't the things you'll regret. You'll regret that you didn't stay and have more time with your kids and that you didn't work harder to have a relationship with yeah. the other parents to make it easy for them. So, you know, and that was the thing that, that the best child psychologist I think I spoke to at the time, and I forget her name, she was an amazing woman. She just said, Luke, like, you'll control that, you know. If you can show your kids, like, what relationships, what they go through and how to manage that, like, she said, they'll be no more harmed or damaged or affected than if they stay in a home that's in a, a relationship or marriage void of love and respect. Like, what are you teaching them then about what a marriage or what a relationship looks like? That gave me a lot of peace to say, okay, well, you know, there's so much I can still show them about relationships and how to, to behave. And, and like I say, guys, I'm sure I've got, a, I've, I've got a power wrong, no doubt, but there were certain things, you know, for me that were critical. To never, ever badmouth my ex in front of my children, you know. There have been times with friends that I've said, you know, things that, uh, that frustrated me and voiced those. But, um, you know, never in front of, never ever in front of my kids, you know. And I'm very blessed to have been in a relationship with an amazing woman for the last 10 years. And that was something that I, I said to her was important for me in our relation, in, our, in my new relationship with her, was that there was never any animosity or anger in our house about their mom. Because she would always be their mom, you know. And they were always going to love her. So what value are you adding by criticizing or complaining? So, um, yeah, we've been very lucky, but uh, we've worked hard at it. And it's been, um, it's been incredibly tough some days because you do have, you fall out over things. But um, it's been so worthwhile and rewarding. And it's, it's quite interesting now chatting to guys who are like, they're just at that, taking that step. They've just got divorced and they're like, Luke, how have you done this for 10 years? I said, well, if you set it up properly, you know, 10 years goes by quite quickly. Mm. And to be able to sit on the side of a sports field with three parents, you know, a mom, a stepmom and a dad, and for your child to look off that sport field and see you all there together rooting for them uh, is invaluable. And I hope that, you know, that's meant a lot to them. But it's been an outcome worth, really worth chasing. And that's, uh, yeah, I think that's always what I've tried to remember and what I try and encourage people to do is to just is to, to shut away the noise and to build a structure to co-parent. Because once there's a structure and, and something to reference, it makes it a little bit easier mm. um, if there's an agreement. Did you ever think Paulie would be, or I am certainly sitting here just smiling. I mean, I didn't think that when I would be chatting to a divorce coach that I would sit and smile through the whole thing. But it really does warm my heart because it really, it feeds so into the work that Paul and I do at Kindness Can. You know, it's it's all about taking those thoughts and feelings and navigating the behavior. It's about the communication. It's about the patience. It's about the falling down, but getting back up. It's about the striving for progress and not for perfection. It's for role modeling to our children that we are people uh, who sometimes most of the time get it wrong, but we'll keep trying and we'll keep trying. We have resilience. Uh, we live in hope that yeah. the outcome will be peaceful and symbiotic. Uh, it, it, it really has been such a wonderful conversation. I think it's so wonderful as well that you've created a space for divorced dads, because I think that there is, I don't know if it's perception, but this kind of taboo that, you know, the dads don't really have the support that they need. You know, it feels like the women have a lot more of a sisterhood that's very open to chatting about divorce and the process. But I feel yeah. really warm to know that there is a safe space and that you can guide people. So how do people get hold of you, Luke? Best is probably on my email address, luke at watershed.com. And then we just uh, take it from there, Jane. 
And I'm also so glad that you stayed in the Midlands because if you didn't, I wouldn't have my fireplace. Paulie, the <laughs> fireplace that we sit and huddle around in our lounge is from Fires and Bryce from Luke in the Midlands, Bruce. Um, so I'm so glad you stayed there. <laughs> but I think, you, <laughs> beyond making gorgeous fireplaces, it sounds like the work that you're doing is so valuable. And I've just got to pull out <laughs> one line that you used there that I just felt was just so wonderful that you'll never regret being kind and you'll never regret being patient i think that that's just sums it up really so thank you so much for your time yeah, thank, thank you so you, much guys. for the work yeah we wish you all the very best thanks very yeah, much lovely, lovely to see you both and uh look forward to chatting again and if you're ever in the midlands or when you are next up give us a shout and uh let's get together around we the good fight it. yay lots of love to everyone bye thanks all. Bye. Bye. Take care, bye bye You've been listening to Kindness Can, the podcast. Find out more at kindnesscan.co.za.